A year after Maisie Williams stopped playing Arya, assassinated an entire family, Stark, she appeared in the 2020 home invasion movie, The Owners, where, of all things, she was murdered by an old couple. This movie, like all home invasion films, was also a cinematic PSA to not break into people's homes. Because, you know, they might be more diabolical than you. But if, hypothetically of course, you still find yourself robbing a bunch of psychos, fret not. The upcoming guide will hopefully help you survive. First, don't take your friends at their word. Remember, children, your friends are everyday humans just like you. Their words aren't holy writ. You do not have to blindly take their word for everything, especially when they tell you that the local old deers are loaded with cash and other valuable items. They might be, but again, your buddy relating something that his mom said <laughs> is almost the same as cryptic symbolism in your dreams. Pretty unreliable. Our friend Nathan may have made that mistake in the movie, but you don't have to. Like, go ahead, rob people. Not literally though, but please. Do your own research before you break into the property. Now that we've mentioned Nathan's mistakes, it would be unfair not to warn you of the dangers of having sociopaths like Gaz for friends. All right, keep them around if it helps you in any way, but for the love of God, don't team up with them to rob people. They'll turn on you in no time. Who might we team up with then, you ask? Like we don't know. Saner people, maybe? People who'll carry the plan to turn without stabbing you for not doing things their way? Bottom line is, keep your enemies close but your friends closer. This mention of closeness brings us to Terry's character, another favorite you need to do yourself, and we can't believe we have to tell you this, is not to bring the couple's caretaker's son with you as a co-conspirator. But we'll get into the details of this mistake later in the video. Stay tuned. Next, break in 1.0. When we said do your own research, we didn't necessarily mean surveying the property and the couple from the outside. We also meant get your butt in there. See. The people that you're about to rob have lived in that house for years. They know it like the back of their hand and have probably thief-proofed it to the best of their abilities. You, on the other hand, don't know jack about it. Thus, the first break-in won't only help you decide a hiding place if, let's say, the couple decides to barge in in the middle of you pocketing grandma's gold dentures on D-Day, but also help you immediately get to business instead of cutting open furniture to see if it's where they put their cash. Gaz, where on God's green earth did you get that idea? They're old not insane. We hope you understand now why we told you to pick your co-conspirators carefully. All of that, especially Gaz's ingenious idea aside, it would help you to take inventory of, and if you're smart, hide some of the weapons or potential weapons in the house, of which, as you'll notice from the gizmos they have stashed away in their basement, the Huggins don't have a shortage of. We mean, if we were in your shoes, we would have called it a day at the sight of that, but you continue doing you. Anywho, a tour of the basement would also alert you to the safe's location and the fact that it's not electronic. As a result, on the day of the actual heist, you'd have the right tools at hand. But even if you didn't, you could always use the sledgehammer the Huggins just casually have lying around. The reason why we keep hinting at these devices is because we want you to bring weapons to match or abandon the idea of the robbery altogether. <coughs> so, yeah, do that. Not the abandoning bit, the gearing up bit. Speaking of heists and sledgehammers, unless your girlfriend's Nairobi from Money Heist, don't ask her to tag along. And now, leave your partner at home. This one's a no-brainer. We understand that they'd be great support, but unless they've got a useful criminal record, if there is such a thing as that, then it'd be safer to leave them at home. Now, before you bring up the whole car scenario from the film, let's quickly point out that Mary, aka Nathan's girlfriend, has a bicycle as well. She can easily commute to work on it. Regardless, he just had to ask her to lend him his car for a day instead of driving off with it. It would have saved him so much trouble and her, well, her life. See, this is what those communication is key types of posts keep trying to teach us too. Never mind. Now, for those of you who are thinking about the turn of events where your partner refuses to lend you their vehicle, let us introduce you to this magical thing called renting one. It'd be so much safer and in case you have to desert it for one reason or another, they won't be immediately able to trace it back to you. Imagine your girlfriend going to prison because you wanted to rob Gramps down the road of his rainy day money. Bad lead to bad blood for centuries, baby. Okay. Enough relationship advice, let's get back to the survival guide, shall we? Next up, we're going to teach you the importance of a balaclava. Don't forget to keep your identity a secret. 
This one should go without saying, but since the geniuses in the film failed to do it, we're pointing it out. First things first, buy a balaclava. No, old lady stockings aren't the alternative you think they are. Once you've done that, your next goal is to cover up any tattoos or marks that would easily give you away. We get it, tats are too expensive not to show off, but there will be better occasions for that. Remember, the events of the films are taking place in a small countryside home, and unlike in the cities, people in rural areas know each other really well. They've even better chances of recognizing you if you've got you and your missing and probably famous for that reason, sister's name tattooed on your wrist. Finally, do you recall how we hinted at some problems that Terry might pose? They stem from the fact that his mom literally works for the Huggins, so still don't get it? We simply wouldn't bring him along because the Huggins must be way too familiar with him, which if you think about it, would also cause problems if things came to torture or killing. Terry would definitely try to talk you out of it because of their prior acquaintance. In a nutshell, it all comes down to who's helping you commit the crime. Speaking of crimes, here's our next piece of advice. Do a background check on your victims. If you think we're trying to be funny, we're not. We've seen enough home invasion flicks to know how even ordinary people can come into their power, especially when attacked within their own homes. Case in point, Kevin McAllister from Home Alone. A background check is, therefore, quite important. Picture this, the sweet old couple is a veteran power duo as well. What will become of a robber in that case? Or let's say, what's his name a few houses down is trained in hand-to-hand -hand combat? He's going to beat you to pulp faster than you can say Jack Robinson. Do your research. Treat your victim like a specimen. Ask around. Try to find out if they've been involved in any conspiracies or if there are any weird rumors about them. Once you've got the goop on them, sit down and think of a plan of action where you've a way to go around each one of their perceived strengths, or weaknesses for that matter. This will help you subdue them if they turn out to be serial killers, like in the film. But if all of that fails, here's another thing that would also help to a significant degree. And remember, there's strength in numbers. We get that there's nothing more satisfying than stabbing a person who just won't quit annoying you. But it's not the best thing to do when you're in the middle of a robbery. That, too, bordering on a hostage sitch. It's actually never the best thing to do. And neither are robberies. But let's not think of that right now. Anyway. In the circumstances that we've just described, your mates are your only chance at avoiding lifetime imprisonment. Stabbing them is just going to add to your troubles. And can you imagine burying your fellow thief as your original victims wait for you to finish robbing their house? Yeah, it is as weird as it sounds. So, dear viewers, make note of retaining your numbers and not killing them off yourself. If, however, you still manage to injure one of your gang members, don't ask the hostages to see their injuries. Untying them or loosening your watch on them at a time like this will further botch your plan. You might as well sign your own death warrant. Keep your head on and wrap things up, and then simply take them to the hospital afterwards. But again, that's only possible if you've not injured them into the Valley of the Dead. All in all, we wish you luck on your thieving sprees. Not. Please don't take what we've said seriously. Go watch the film with these loopholes in mind instead, like the Good Samaritan that we know you are. That's a wrap for this video. Are you a fan of home invasion films, or do you think they need to retire the genre? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.